Hello and welcome back, my stylish friends. Today I want to show you how I started each circle for my Chasing Sunshine Spiral Sweater. I will try to do this as uh, slow as possible. Pause this video, go get four different colors of yarn and crochet hook and let's do this together. You start by leaving long enough tails of your yarn, kind of like hand uh, long, just because those tails you will be hiding in the middle of your uh, circle and you wanna have uh, long enough to do this nice. Now take all those tails and make a knot. This knot should be not too tight and not too loose because we will be incorporating part of this knot as our first stitches. By creating this knot, you created loops on the bottom and on the top. We will be incorporating the top portion. And this is how I do that. I look at which color it's the closest to the top of my knot first. Then I will select that color. So the first one that is very sticking out to me is the red one. You take the yarn and you just pull through that knot, making one kind of like chain stitch from that knot. And then you can make any stitch you want for your project. I was using half double crochet stitch. Once I'm done with one color, I will look again at my knot and select new color. And I want to point something out here. The first that I see is this green, but on my knot, the green is actually the last color here. And I do not want to choose this green. I want my color to be in order. They appear on the knot. So my next color to work will be purple. So find your purple or any color you chose that is next in line. Put your hook through the knot opening, chain, and once you create that first chain, make your stitch. And I'm using half double crochet. So we will repeat this process two more times. Again, we're looking what's the next color. In my case is yellow. So I'm finding my working yellow yarn. And making one chain and one have double crochet. So this is kind of difficult part, but if you practice a few times, I'm sure you will be fine. And that's our last color. And let's find that too. And exactly we're making the same thing, chain and our stitch. So this is how I started my circles. Now, let me talk a little bit about the knot and the tails behind. I know it looks very messy right now because it looks like we have eight different tails here, but don't worry about the tails. I will show you in the end of this video how to hide them. And, um, 
you will not even know they existed there. For right now, take them under your project. And our next step will be connecting these four stitches together to start the spiral design. So let's align the next stitch, making sure that we have tails under our work. Make sure that the stitch is aligned the right way. And what you will do, you will make next stitch of your choice, which I use half double crochet in the first kind of chain stitch from the knot of the new color. I hope that makes sense what I just said. So let's repeat. I will take my next yarn color that is not connected yet to the next stitch and I will make one stitch in the first chain that has been created from uh, the knot. By doing that, not only you are connecting the stitches, but you're making your knot under your work more flat. And you saw in the beginning, the knot was kind of large. At the end of this kind of row or round, you will notice that your knot is getting more flat. And that's what we want. And we will repeat this process for every color we have because we want all four colors to be connected to each other. And going forward, we will be making stitches always on top of the different color, increasing stitches in each round you can call it. In the beginning of this project, the goal is to make nice circle, spiral design circle. When the circle will grow to the size of your sweater, you will be shaping that circle as a square or rectangle. Depends how long you want the sweater to be. Our next step will be increasing stitches and making this uh, look more like circle. And you see, I have those kind of like white stitches open. What I like to do first is to make them a little bit more close. So instead of going only through my back loop, I will actually pick up my back bump as well and I will make stitches, one for each color as of right now. And this will give me more um, tight look, complete circle in the end. So let's change the color and we will be making stitches in the back loop and back bump of the previous stitch. Not only that we are making second stitch in the same stitch, but also we making this more uh, put together. So your fabric you making will be uh, not too loose in the, in the center. This is also our uh, stitch increase because we making second stitch in the same stitch. So let's continue making one stitch through both loops. The future stitch increases will depend how you want to shape your project. So just make sure that for now on you just make in circle. Of course, our circle is more challenging to make because we're not using one color of yarn, but we're trying to incorporate four. 
also when you're changing um, your yarn color and you're placing your hook make sure that you place your hook the right way so the stitch is not twisted okay i believe the most challenging part is behind us now we just will have fun creating our circle and to do this you will be working any stitch you would like i was using half double crochet stitches in the back loop only so how i make my stitches in the beginning i have to change my yarn very often because i have only one or two stitches to work in so i will place my hook always in the back loop only and depending on the shape of this circle I will either make the one stitch or I will do stitch increase by making two stitches in the same stitch. And of course, going forward, my stitches uh, increases placement will spread. So if I'm making now every other or every third stitch increase, if I go farther in the project i will be making increases every fifth or maybe seventh or even maybe every tenth stitch so just watch your project how it's growing and you decide when you want to make your increase also it's helpful if from time to time you place your a project on a flat surface and see if you don't have any bulges or tightness make sure that it's laying nice and flat what I did after gaining few stitches in each color I bring them up to the one side and I was working kind of making snail which means I did each color, one row, came back to the end and start new color. But you can also work only quarter of the circle by changing each color as I'm doing right now. And I will show you how to make a snail and work. But right now, because we do not have enough stitches, we have to change the yarn color and work in only a few stitches at a time. Please keep in mind that each person will do different increases in the circle. There is few reasons for it. Your yarn weight depends what yarn are you using. The hook uh, number, which is the size of the hook. And also very important thing is your yarn tension. If your yarn tension when you're making your stitches is very tight, you will probably make more increases than the person whose yarn tension is more loose. So please keep that in mind. And I believe I have enough stitches here to start making my snail. And I will show you how to do that. Or you can continue just working each quarter of the circle around and changing color each time. So to make a snail, I will bring one color all the way to the end of one color. And then I just add each color to one side. So my snail, I will call it, will be growing on one side. Our circle still look a little bit like square, but we are making more rounded edges each time. So when you work in those edges, and that's probably the most difficult part to visualize 
this circle. So let's continue make these stitches and increase the size of the circle to some point so I can show you how the snail will look like. I am calling this snail because snail uh, shell it's a logarithmic spiral that follows mathematical pattern known as a Fibonacci sequence. If you're familiar with Fibonacci sequence, is a sequence of numbers in which number of sum is equal to proceed number. And this is exactly what we are doing here. Crochet is a lot about geometry and mathematical calculation. It is beautiful art form where the numbers really matters. That's why we always counting stitches, we counting rows to be sure that we have the right amount of stitches to create something perfect. So I'm still working on my snail and once I'm done with this color, I will connect this to my stitch marker as well. And I was using stitch marker because it's the easier for me. You can use safety pin. Uh, it's the same principle. You're just removing the bottom color, which in my case will be red. And I start new row around and I switch color once I finish that round. So I'm attaching the top row to my stitch marker. I have one more to do, which it will be purple. And then once I'm done with purple, I will start red again. But with this exercise, I want to actually finish by creating more circle again instead of snail because I want to show you what to do with our uh, beginning tails, how to hide them. So I will not complete purple all the way to my stitch marker. I want to separate the ends of each color to four different side of my circle. Also, if you work in that way, where you work only one quarter of the circle, you can take stitch markers and place them in each end of your yarn. So it's kind of protected, you will not lose that uh, yarn. Also keep in mind, when you will be growing your circle, uh, when you reach the width of your sweater, you will not be going all around. You will be making additional rows on the top only or the bottom only with different color yarn to make a continuation of the circle, like illusion that you're still making that circle, but you will stop adding rows to the side of the sweater. And I hope that's helpful information as well. So I'm removing my stitch marker and I will bring now each color to the opposite side so I have nice spread yarn all around my circle and then I will show you how I hide the ends under this project. And of course, you can do this now with me or you can do in the end once you completely finish every single piece of your sweater. So you will be making at least four circles. You need for the front, back and two sleeves. You will start the circle exactly the same way with the sleeve. At some point, you will be shaping the circle into oval 
and with the front and back at some point you will start shaping as square or rectangle I also make two small circles on the shoulder in the back to make the shoulder more elongated in the back but that's optional just be creative I create my own pieces since I remember probably for over 40 years now because I personally do not like to read instructions even if I buy something that has manual and you have to read how to assemble, I usually try to assemble without reading instruction and then just look for instruction if I have problem. But that's just me. Just have fun. Whatever you're creating, just have fun. It's very fun art and hobby. And to me, it's very relaxing. And I hope to you too. Okay, look at this beautiful circle with four corners. Yes, we make this beautifully, looks nice. This is our right side and you will be working, you know, more around, around to make this bigger. But let's focus right now, take a needle and let's hide the ends. Let me show you how I do that and what to focus on because this will be the center of your sweater and you want this to be nice and flat. Gently pull your tails up, just gently, making sure that there is nothing loose and then just start weaving them in between stitches. So it does not matter which color you start first, but try to do the way that they're aligned so that you're not making more bulky pattern under. So I chose the red one first. I go through a few stitches. And what I like to do, I like to go in between fiber because I feel like the stitch is more secure. And of course, you redirecting the yarn the other way. So you are certain that when you wash your clothes, it will not unravel and will be secure for a long, long time. Or I should say forever. So one is done. Let's make another one, which we do the same way. You thread your needle and you go in between stitches and you always want to have the same color of yarn going through the same color of stitches. That way you will hide this um, tail beautifully and you will not even know what's ever there. And I'm doing the same thing as always, making sure that it's not too tight. I want flexibility of my stitches to be still there. And you just go in between the yarn or between even the fiber of the yarn to be sure it's secure. Don't pull too tight and cut yarn as close as to the project as possible and you're done. So we have two more. And we are repeating the same process. Find my color. I'm going under and through the stitches. Also make sure you will not make the stitch visible on the right side. That's why it's easier when you work in the same color yarn and the same color stitch. Because if you do make very like visible on the right side, it's hidden because it's the same color of yarn. Okay, 
I really hope you learned something new today and this information is helpful to you. And let me know if you have any questions. I will try help as much as I can. Also, um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and follow for more. Thank you so much for crocheting with me today. That was a challenging project, but we did this and we did it beautifully. Share your projects with me. I would love to see them. So this is my right side. What do you think? I think this color looks good too. So maybe I will incorporate them for some other project. But you continue working, making this bigger and just enjoy the crocheting part. I hope again you learn something new and this information was helpful to you. I will see you next time. Have a great day.